This tutorial outlines how to use variable data in Photoshop. It's used to create multiple variations of the same graphic and output as PSD files. So let's say you need the same graphic, but you need 30 different versions of it with a different phone number, or a different photo, or a different headline. Typically, this process is used to create a large set of banners. You wouldn't use this to create three banners, but you might if you need to create 30, or 100, or 200, or even more. To do this, you need Photoshop CS3 or above. We're using CS4 in this tutorial. And you also need Excel or another program to save a CSV file. The example we're using today has five variables. Store ID, which is actually hidden. We're just using that to name the output file. The second variable is the headline message. In this example, 40% off your first service. And the percentage changes. Third is the phone number. Each store has a different phone number. Fourth, the white body copy has a different city name in the text. And fifth, the photo. Let's say the store were owned by three different brothers, and each wanted their photo on the store that belongs to them. For this project, we've got two files. We've got a Photoshop file, which is layered. It's a 728 by 90, the kind you might use to do an online banner. The second file is an Excel document which holds the data we're going to use to feed the variables. Each variable that you want to bring in needs to be set up as a separate layer in Photoshop. First thing we need to do is define the variables. Let's take a quick look at the Excel sheet first. Each column in the Excel file represents a different variable. The first column holds the store IDs. The second column holds the sale message that will be used for the headline. The last column holds the location of the images that are going to be swapped out. Each row in the Excel file represents a different file that will be output from Photoshop. In this example, we have 30 rows. The first row are column headers. So with 29 rows of data, Photoshop would output 29 different files. In Photoshop, let's define the variables. Image, variables, define. Message is going to be a text replacement. Let's call it message. Notice that that is the same as the column heading in Excel. Store ID. I called that ID in Excel. Sale, call it sale. An image, then we get the option of a pixel replacement. That's simply swapping one image for another. And call it image. Phone is a text replacement. And that's all that we need to change. So let's say OK. Take another look at that Excel file. And notice here this path. Let me show you how to find that. I have my image files stored on the desktop in a folder called variables. These are just ping files with transparent backgrounds. To get the file path that needs to be copied into Excel, right click and select get info when the file is selected. Simply add a slash and the file name to the end of that path and add it to the image column in Excel. If we go back to Excel, you can see I've got that listed here. Right now this is an Excel file. You need to do File Save As in Excel and save it as a CSV file so that Photoshop can read it. After saving the file, be sure to close it so that Photoshop can access it. And back to Photoshop. Go to Image, Variables. Now we're going to go to Data Sets. And you can swap back and forth right here. And we're going to Import. Just browse to the CSV file that you saved in Excel. And then select Load. We have checked the box to use the first column for data set names. 
That's what's going to allow us to use the store ID as the file name and the final output. Now that you've imported your data, you can use the left right arrows next to the data set pull down to preview your images. It isn't really turning out exactly the way we want it to. So go back to define and choose image from the pull down menu. On to image, and you'll see right here Photoshop gives some options for the way you want it to fit. Since I know that my images were saved at the size that I want to use them, I'm going to choose as is instead of fit. Switch back to data to preview it again. And this is what we wanted to see. You also notice that I did bring in that store ID, but it's not actually showing up on the file. Let's look at that under layers. You'll see um, this number right here is actually the store ID. Notice that the I is off, which means that it's hidden. I set it up this way so that the output files would be named according to the store ID. Say OK to exit out of that box and you're all set to export the files. Go to File, Export, Datasets as Files. Click on the Select Folder button to browse through the folder where you'd like to save the files. You have several options for how you want to name the file. We're going to use the data set name plus the extension. That's why we had that store ID variable so that each file would be named according to the store ID. The file extension is PSD. You can choose between upper or lower case if that makes a difference for your project. Photoshop can only save as Photoshop files. If you need a different file format, you'll need to batch process the files that are output. You're all set. Just click OK to start the process. It's all done. Here's a quick snapshot of the resulting files.